We only have 10 minutes, so let's get straight into it. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually install some extensions, and these are built into GDevault. So the first thing you want to do is go to the project manager, then go over here to create a search for new extensions, and we're going to get four extensions. The first extension we want is going to be called Jump 3D, and these are some new extensions that have been added that make 3D gameplay much, much easier in GDevault. So we're going to install this in the project first. The next extension we want to install is Walk 3D. Walk 3D, also very useful. And you can see the creators of the extension here. Make sure to check them out. Very talented creators. So we have the 3D walk here. And then we're going to get two more. So we're going to need a third person camera so we can see the player, of course. We're going to get the third person camera. And also, we're going to have one more extension, which is called Collision 3D. All of these extensions make it extremely easy to make 3D platformers in GeoVault. These new extensions are absolutely amazing. Now, the second thing we need to do is actually add a player. So now we're going to add a new object. And of course, this needs to be a 3D box. You could do a 3D model, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to be using a 3D box. We're going to name it player. And then I'm going to go down. We don't want any lighting. And we want to choose a file that we want to represent our faces. So I'm going to quickly find one here. And here I have this blue cube. So I'm going to use this blue cube. And I'm going to put this as all the faces. You want to put the same sprite as all of your faces, unless you want different faces, of course. It's up to you to do that. Now we have the player. And another thing we're going to add to the player, we're going to use this later for a double jump. We're not going to use it now, but we want to go to our variables tab and add a variable. This variable will be called jumps because this will regulate how many jumps the player has. And by default, our player will have two jumps by default. Well, actually zero jumps by default. Let's start with that. So I'm going to hit apply. And now we have the player. So now we actually want to start making some programming for the player. Now, for the player, we're going to double click back into it and we're going to go into our behaviors. And the first behavior we want to add is the 3D jump. So if we scroll down, we should see 3D jump. And you have settings here that you can change. I'm going to keep these the same for right now, but you can change these settings. They're just like the 2D platformer settings. I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to add another object. Well, not add another object. I'm going to go to it and add another behavior. And this behavior is going to be the 3D walk. So I'm going to scroll down to I see 3D walk. And once again, you have all these settings. You can change them if you like, but I'm going to keep them the same for now. Now I'm going to drag the player onto the scene. I'm going to hit preview. So now you'll see that we can't move the player right now. And the reason why we can't move the player is because we have to actually program the player's controls using the event. So let's go into our event window and start adding events. Now the first event that we want is we want to be able to move around the four directions. Now this is very easy to program. I'm going to go into other conditions, keyboard, key press, and we're going to start off with moving forward. So for the W key is pressed, and we don't want this to be triggered once. We want to be able to hold this. When the W key is pressed, we want to simulate moving forward for the player. So I'm going to click into the player and scroll down, and you should see the walking states. We have the walking states, and we have simulate move forward key press. That's what we want here. And I'm going to copy and paste this three more times. I'm going to do this by using control V. And for down here, I'm going to put S. We're going to use S to move backwards. We're going to use A to move left. And we're going to use D to move right. WASD. And now, instead of simulating moving forward key, we want to scroll down and put simulate moving back. Simulate moving backwards for S. For this, we want to be careful. We don't want to turn. We want to simulate a move left key press. Do not simulate a turn left. We want to simulate a move left key press. And for the D key, we want to simulate a move right key press. So we're going to simulate a move right key press. And now I'm going to preview, and we should be able to move in all four directions. As you can see, we can move in all four directions. But if you're testing this out right now, you'll see that things are kind of whack. If we use A and D, we move up and down. And if we use S and W, we move left and right. And that's because we haven't set up our camera. So let's do that now. So I'm going to put Shift A to create a new event. And now we're going to actually set up our camera. Now our camera, we want the camera to always follow the player, so we're not going to put a condition. I'm going to add an action, and I'm going to click into our player, and I'm going to scroll down and see if I can find look at objects from a distance. This is from the three, third person camera extension. Now the distance I want to look at it from is 500. You can set this to a good distance. Make sure it's not too close. The rotation angle around the z-axis, this controls the angle around the z-axis. We're having problems with our angle around the z-axis. As you see, it's a little bit inverted. So we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And the elevation angle, we just want to change it to 20. You can test around with different values. I find that 20 is a good value. But you can play whatever values you want. So now if I look at the player, view already looks different. The view already looks different. We're kind of looking at the top of the player's head. 
But now if I'm using WASD, you'll see that it looks like I'm not moving. And in reality, I am moving, but you can't really tell that I'm moving anymore because the way that the camera is situated, it's hard to tell that the player is actually moving because we're just in a blank void. So now we need to actually add some different objects. But before we add those different objects, we also have to program our jump. So I'm going to put Shift A, add a new event, add a condition, go into other conditions, keyboard, key press, and I'm going to put space because this is what we're going to be using to jump. And if space key is pressed, I'm going to add an action, click it to our player, and now we want to simulate jump. We want to simulate a jump. So I'm going to put simulate jump key press, and now I'm going to hit preview, and let's see what happens. If I press space, you still see that nothing is really happening at the moment. Nothing at all is ha happening for the player. And like I said, it's hard to see the movement because we have no other objects. So now we're going to actually add some, some different objects now. So I'm going to go into our add new objects, and we're going to add some ground. We're going to add some platforms that the player can walk onto. So I'm going to add another 3D box, and this is going to be called ground. And we're going to just use, I'm going to find another file here. I'm going to use a black cube. You can use whatever file you want. I'm going to show all the faces and fill them in here. And now that these are filled in, I'm going to drag this ground onto the scene and I'm going to stretch it out. I'm going to stretch it out. So now if we have this stretched out, we should be able to see this ground from a distance. And now if I actually start using, using the WSD keys, you can actually now see movement because we have another object to look at. We're not in a void. But you'll see we have a problem is that we're going through this platform and that's an issue. And that's where our collision comes in, but not exactly our collision. There's another extension, part of the 3D jump, that we can use instead of using that this instead of using a 3D collision. So let's just start with how you make platforms. Now the way you make platforms, we're gonna put shift A and I'm gonna put always. We want this condition to always happen, so we're not gonna we're gonna leave this condition blank. I'm going to add an action and then I'm going to go click into our separate. I'm going to separate player. And we're not separate player. I'm gonna pick player. And if I go down, you can you see separate from platform. And this basically allows us to land on platforms. So I'm gonna go down and you see we can separate ourselves from platform. And we want to separate ourselves from ground. And I'm gonna pick OK. In order for this to work, both objects have to be 3D. So now you see that this works exactly like a platform. We can jump on and off of this platform. So this is good. So now that that's done, we have platform. We have the camera. Now we want to start adding some of our advanced features. Now the first advanced feature we want to add is the double jump. Now the double jump is not super hard to make, but we're going to just simply make it. That's why we have our jump, um, our jump variable. That's the reason why we have that. So let's start making by the double jump. So first of all, we want to make it so the player has two jumps. So basically we want to put, if the player is on the floor, we want the player's jumps to be set to two. And if the player jumps, we want the jumps to start going down. But before we do that, we have to set a new condition for our player in order to jump. So of course we want the space key to be at the press, but the amount of jumps that the player has also needs to be greater than zero. So let's do that. So I'm gonna put add condition, other conditions, and then I'm gonna go into and. And the and that we want is we wanna check whether the jumps of the player and this object variable are greater than zero. So I'm gonna click into our player I'm going to type in variable, go into our number variable, and we want to check if jumps is greater than zero. And also we want to put trigger once on space. We want to put trigger once on the space, and this will be useful later. But now we're saying a condition, so the player can't just jump whenever they want to anymore because it has no jumps. Now actually setting the double jump limits, we want to set when the player is on the floor, we want the player's jumps to refresh back to two. So I'm going to put player, and I'm going to put if it's on floor. If the player is on the floor, I'm going to put trigger once because we don't want this to keep happening or we'll never be able to jump. We want to put trigger once and we want to set the jumps of the player. So we're going to click into a player, type in variable, go into the number variable, and we want to set this equal to two. Now also, if the space key is pressed, if the space key is pressed, I'm going to put shift A, add condition, other conditions go into our keyboard and then put key press. If space key is pressed, we're going to also have this trigger once. I'm going to copy this trigger once and paste it here. 
if base key is pressed, we want to subtract the amount of jumps by one. So I'm going to put player variable, change number variable, jumps, and then subtract it by one. So with this, now we should have our double jump working, but not we're not going to have it working just yet because we have to allow our player to actually be able to jump. So now we can jump, but you see we can only jump once and that's because we haven't allowed our player to jump again. But it's a simple code that we can use to allow our player to jump again. I'm gonna put shift A one more time and we wanna check if the player's jumps are greater than zero. As long as the player's jumps are greater than zero, we want the player to be able to jump again. So I'm gonna click into player, type in variable one more time, put number jumps and then put greater than zero. So if now the player's jumps are greater than zero, as an action, we want to be able to allow jumping again. And that's where we use the 3D jump extension. We're gonna click into our player and you'll see for the jump, I'm gonna scroll down until we see allow jumping again. It should be somewhere here. Yeah, allow jumping again. And now we should be able to double jump just fine. So if I press space, I can jump once. If I press space two times in the air, I can jump twice. So now we have a double jump. One more feature I want to add before this tutorial ends is um, a quick drop or a fast drop. This is pretty common in 2D platformers. A quick drop or a fast drop. So I'm going to, first of all, add a new condition. And we want to trigger this by pressing down. And what we're basically going to do is when down key is pressed, we want to change the gravity of the player to make it really heavy and fall really fast. So I'm going to put, first of all, add condition. I'm going to put other conditions, keyboard, and then down key. We want to put down. If down key is pressed, and we want to put trigger once because we don't want this to keep happening, keep triggering even if we're holding the button. We want it to just be trigger once. And what the first thing we're going to do is abort the jump. And what it means to abort a jump, it means it cancels the jump. So no matter where we are on the jump, it's automatically going to cancel it. So I'm going to put player, and I'm going to put abort jump. And then I'm also going to put add an action and now we want to change the player's gravity so I'm going to go into player and scroll down and there's a typo here it says gravity it's not gravity it's gravity so don't go think it's gravity I'm going to set equal to 5,000 5,000 gravity according to them so also I'm going to put shift a again because this is fine but we also want to reset the player's gravity or gravity to the certain to the original value that was at which was 1,000 in our circumstance so we want to reset the player so when the player is on four, I'm actually going to copy it from here. Copy and I'm going to paste it. If player is on four, floor. If player is on the floor, we want to set the gravity to be equal to 1,000. So I'm going to paste this. And now we're going to set the gravity or, like they say, gravity back equal to 1,000. So now if I jump in the air, I can double jump. And if I press the down key, you'll see that I start falling really fast. I start falling really fast. And one more thing. We haven't set up any like walls. We have not set up any walls for the player that I can crash into. So now we want to actually set up like a wall that the player can, you know, can easily crash into. We want to start separating it from other objects. So let's say I add a new object. I'm going to add another 3D box. And this is going to be called wall. I'm going to set the image as some random colored cube that I have. I have a bunch of them. And of course we want to show all the faces. So you can fill them in here. And once you have all the cues filled in, you can get out of it and hit apply. Now, if I put this wall into the scene, I'm going to stretch it out in terms of its height so it can be more of an actual wall. I'm going to try to stretch it out in its, in its depth. I guess I got to stretch it out in its depth in order to actually make it kind of tall. But either way, we have a wall. And we, can cra we don't crash into the wall. So the way that we do collisions is I'm going to add a new condition, put shift A, and we want to check, first of all, if player, and we want to scroll down until we find our 3D collision, if the distance, well, this is comparing distance. I'm trying to find the collision. If collision, if player is in collision with a wall, if player is in collision with wall, I'm going to add an action, player, and we want to separate the objects. It's so going to scroll down where it says separate objects in 3D, and the object that won't move is the wall. So now when our player crashes to the wall, the wall will push it out of itself so you can't go through it. And here we have it, the player, and it works in all directions. You cannot go through the wall no matter what. 
And that's how you make an advanced 3D platformer in GDevelop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, and comment down below, and hit the notification bell so you never miss on any of my new videos. Also, consider becoming a member with special perks for only $0.99 a month. I'm going to make another part of the 3D platformer that includes dashing. In the very near future, that will be the next tutorial of a true advanced 3D platformer where I go into explaining some more of the advanced features. And one of those will be dashing and hopefully a few others. But I hope you, you once again enjoyed the tutorial and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.